Hello and welcome to an English lesson for fourth grade high school students. My name is Davor Czerny and I'll be your teacher for today. So today we're going to talk about financial investing, opening a bank account, taking out a loan. Let's get ready. You probably have your equipment ready, an internet connection, maybe a notebook, a pen or a pencil. You can stop the video at any time. In the video description, you can find all the links needed for this lesson. This is a short list of the links we're going to use in this unit. What are we going to do in this lesson? Practice passive voice, continue to raise our financial awareness, develop financial vocabulary, do some research, and listen to a conversation for the main idea or detail. So, banks, what do I know about them? So if you remember from last time, can you make short notes? What are banks? What I can do in a bank or what can I do in a bank? What types of banks are there? And how old are the banks? These are the possible answers. So we said that banks are financial institutions. We said that we can deposit money, draw money, take, repay a loan, open or close an account and invest. What types of banks are there? There are commercial, investment, national and fintech banks. How old are the banks? We said last time that banks are more than 10,000 years old. So banks, what do I know about them? They're everywhere, all around the world, both in the real world and in the virtual world. They're very safe and secure. And they can be very dangerous. So we have to be careful with money. We have to be responsible with the money. So we don't end up like the photo says, until debt tear us apart. The other thing we talked about last time were passives. What do I know about them? B plus participle of the main verb. This is how we form the passive. So B plus plus participle. What else do you know about passives? The object becomes more important than the subject. Direction of the action stays the same from subject to object. So in the active sentence, the activity, the action goes from the subject to the object. The same thing happens in the passive voice. The only difference is that object is in the first place in the sentence. What else do I know about passives? For example, the hundred kuna will be refunded. This is a passive sentence in future simple. What is he called by his friends? Which tense would this be? Euros are often accepted instead of local currency. Can you see the similarity? Yes, this is present simple. All our supply of toilet paper has been bought. This would be the same as my brother has been caught out before thinking that. Present perfect, right. So, what do I know about passives? Let's practice some more. You have a text and some verbs that you have to fit into gaps let's check your answers their family business had serious cash flow problems last year and it ran up huge debts trying to keep things going in the end it went bankrupt all their employees were made redundant the bank repossessed their house and they were left 
without a penny to their name. You notice that we didn't use passives in all the sentences. You have additional activities following this link. Let's do some vocabulary practice. Bank account, changing money. These are our topics for now. There, is, there are four definitions on the left. Try to connect them with their terms on the right. Let's check your answers. So an agreement with your bank that allows you to spend money when you have no money left in your account is called overdraft. A plastic card given by a bank that you use for paying for things, it moves money automatically from your bank account to the account of the person you're paying is called a debit card. An amount of money that is outstanding has not yet been paid is, of course, outstanding. And the right to use a flat building or a piece of land that you rent from the person you own who owns it is called tenancy agreement. Here is another set of definitions. So allowed by rules or laws to do something or to receive something is called eligible. A bank account that you can take money out of whenever you want using a check or a cash card usually includes overdraft. The American word is checking account or we can say current account. An agreement with the bank that allows you to keep your money there and to pay money in and take money out is called a basic bank account. And the money you pay for lessons or private school or university is called a tuition fee. And the last set of words, account fee, minimum balance requirement and freebies. So something that someone gives you that you do not have to pay for, these are called, these are called of course, freebies. And we have an account fee and minimum balance requirement left. So, an annual fee that a brokerage bank or any other organization assesses on all accounts for the ability to keep an account at that organization is called an account fee. So this is something you pay to your bank or a broker to keep your account. And for bank accounts, the minimum balance is, of course, the minimum balance requirement. So this is the amount of money that you must have in an account to receive some service benefit. Now follow the links and try to use these phrases in sentences. Let's move on. We are going to do a bit of listening to conversations connected to banks and money. Listen to the conversations and answer the three questions. What does the first speaker in the conversation want? What are some of the problems he encounters? And what is the outcome of the conversation? Before you listen, you can make yourself two tables for the conversation one and conversation two, where you can write the answers to these three questions. So repeat, what does the first speaker want? What are some of the problems? And what is the outcome of the conversation? Let's listen. Hi, I'd like to open a bank account, please. Certainly. Do you have some form of identification? Yes, I've got my passport with me. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine, but we also need proof of your current address. Do you have a utility bill or a tenancy agreement with you? No, I don't, I'm afraid. You see, I'm not directly paying bills at the moment because I don't have a bank account. I'm living in a shared house, a student house, and I just pay a fixed amount every month. Okay, well, do you have any proof of income or insurance number at all? No, I don't believe this. I'm a student. I don't have a job. I have my passport, my driving license from back home, four checks I want to deposit, and this UCAS letter. Oh, can I just have a quick look at that? Ah, oh, okay, I see. Right, well, this should be fine. 
What kind of account were you after? Just a normal current account. Okay. Well, what we can do is give you a three-month trial period on a current account, which will cost you £10 a month. And if you do decide to stay with us after that, the £30 will be refunded. This is extortion, really, but what choice do I have? Okay. Well, if you can just fill out these forms. Hi. I'm flying to Moscow and I need to get hold of some Russian currency. I'm not sure what it's called, I'm afraid. No problem. I'll just check for you. Yes, there we are. It's the ruble. How much are you after? About £400 worth, please. OK, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's see. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, sir, but I'm afraid we're actually completely out of ruble. Oh, OK. We don't usually hold so much anyway, and what we did have has been bought. Ah, uh, that's annoying. I'm terribly sorry. Would US dollars or euros do? As I understand it, they're often accepted instead of the local currency. Otherwise, I'm sure you can just change money once you arrive or make a withdrawal from a cash point there. In theory, yes, but I've been caught out before thinking that. Maybe I'll get some dollars just to be on the safe side. Of course. How much would you like? I'll take 200, please. OK, that will be 161 pounds 40 pence. Really? What's the exchange rate? We're currently selling at 1.3 to the pound, and then there's 1.5% commission on all transactions. Right, well, that's the way it goes, I suppose. Can I pay by debit card? Yeah, of course. Just pop the card in there. OK, and just enter your PIN number. Great. Thanks. Welcome back. Let's check the answers. So conversation one, the speaker wants to open a bank account. He doesn't have proof of his current address nor proof of income. And he is given a three month trial period on a current account, which costs 10 pounds a month. In the second conversation, the first speaker wants to buy 400 pounds worth of Russian currency. The problem, the bank is completely out of rubles. And the outcome, he buys US dollars instead. Now we're going to listen to the conversation for the second time. And I would like you to fill in the gaps in these sentences. Let's listen again. Hi, I'd like to open a bank account, please. Certainly. Do you have some form of identification? Yes, I've got my passport with me. Is that OK? Yes, that's fine. But we also need proof of your current address. Do you have a utility bill or a tenancy agreement with you? No, I don't, I'm afraid. You see, I'm not directly paying bills at the moment because I don't have a bank account. I'm living in a shared house, a student house, and I just pay a fixed amount every month. OK, well, do you have any proof of income or insurance number at all? No, I don't believe this. I'm a student. I don't have a job. I have my passport, my driving license from back home, four cheques I want to deposit, and this UCAS letter. Oh, can I just have a quick look at that? Ah, oh, OK, I see. Right, well, this should be fine. What kind of account were you after? Just a normal current account. OK, well, what we can do is give you a three-month trial period on a current account, which will cost you £10 a month. And if you do decide to stay with us after that, the £30 will be refunded. This is extortion, really, but what choice do I have? OK, well, if you can just fill out these forms. Hi, I'm flying to Moscow and I need to get hold of some Russian currency. I'm not sure what it's called, I'm afraid. No problem, I'll just check for you. Yes, there we are. It's the ruble. How much are you after? About £400 worth, please. OK, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's see. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, sir, but I'm afraid we're actually completely out of ruble. Oh, OK. We don't usually hold so much anyway, and what we did have has been bought. Ah, that's annoying. I'm terribly sorry. Would US dollars or euros do? As I understand it, they're often accepted instead of the local currency. 
Otherwise, I'm sure you can just change money once you arrive, or make a withdrawal from a cash point there. In theory, yes, but I've been caught out before thinking that. Maybe I'll get some dollars just to be on the safe side. Of course. How much would you like? I'll take 200, please. Okay, that will be 161 pounds 40 pence. Really? What's the exchange rate? We're currently selling at 1.3 to the pound, and then there's 1.5% commission on all transactions. Right, well, that's the way it goes, I suppose. Can I pay by debit card? Yeah, of course. Just pop the card in there. Okay, and just enter your PIN number. Great. Thanks. Welcome back. Let's check your answers. Conversation 1. Do you have some form of identification? We also need proof of your current address. I just pay a fixed amount every month. What we can do is give you a three month trial period on a current account. And this is extortion really, but what choice do I have? Conversation two, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm afraid we're com actually completely out of ruble. I'll get some dollars just to be on the safe side. What's the exchange rate? And there is 1.5% commission on all transactions. If you want to practice your listening some more, you can follow the links and listen to the recordings and do the exercises on a bit.ly link. So let's discuss. These are some of the questions uh, you can use as a template for your discussion. Have you ever opened a bank account? How do people feel about banks in Croatia? Are there people who don't trust banks and why? And are banks safe? If you want, you can write down your thoughts using the following link. Find out more. What after high school? Plans, going abroad, do you need a bank account or student loan? Here are some websites. If you decide, for example, to study abroad, UK, Denmark, or if you want to study in Croatia and you need to finance your studies, using the following links, you can learn about the possibilities of taking out a student loan. You can discuss your possibilities with your friends. And the last topic for today are financial investments. People invest money. If you don't have real money, you can practice investing using uh, this link, stock, where you can play a stock market game, where you can invest in different stock, stocks and different shares. Uh, of course, today very popular is something called crowdfunding. Here is a link to this crowdfund one to three. This is a link to the creation crowdfunding site. Now I'll show you uh, a little introductory on how to open your Investopedia account. Welcome to Investopedia. Let's register. So type in your email, username, and your password, and click register. You will then get a notification that an email has been sent to your email address with the link which you have to click to verify your account. So you have received an email with a link to verify your email address. Click on the link in the email and you will be taken to the page where you have to click to proceed and your email will be verified. You can then go back to application. Once you have verified your email address, you go back to Investopedia Simulator page and click on Login. 
So if you go to a folder uh, games and click on join games, here you will find all the games you can play. Uh, me, myself, I chose the latest Investopedia game 2020 No End. And this is listed inside of my games list. When I click on the game, I can learn about stock portfolio, I can learn about option portfolio, learn about shortage stock portfolio, go to the learning center, or I can trade stock. You can type in the name of the company whose shares you want to buy. For example, I want to buy some Apple shares. Uh, so you choose the transaction. In this case, I'm going to buy the quantity. I want to buy two Apple shares. You can also check the max uh, of shares you want to buy. Uh, good to till cancelled or day order, so depending on when you want to buy it. So this is the amount of money you still have in your uh, account. Uh, and uh, this is the last price uh, that an Apple share cost. So you can preview the order check what you're going to buy. So the price is $273. Uh, I want to buy two. There is no commission and it will cost me for $546. If I'm satisfied with this order, I click Submit Order. Uh, this is a trade confirmation that my order has been received by the system and will be executed at, executed at the beginning of the next trading day once the proper conditions have been met. So now I just wait and see what uh, is going to happen with my order. Is it going to be uh, proceeded or not? I can check my portfolio. Uh, I see that I already made one transaction, so if I want, I can cancel one of these transactions. So I'm canceling one order, so there is only one order left for my trade today. Uh, there are some messages, awards, and you can do the research yourself. When you're finished with playing the game, please click on the Sign Out button. Welcome back, and to conclude our lesson for today, here is a little exit ticket for you. Please follow the bit.ly link or use the QR code and answer these two simple questions. How did you find today's lesson? and list three things you could use from today's lesson. Hope we'll see each other next time. Have a nice rest of the day. Bye.